Hello and welcome to the new video guide series on the Grandstream GWN 7800 series managed switches. The focus of this series is to provide a complete setup of the Grandstream switches guiding you from basic to advanced settings. In this video we will cover some of the basics, we will talk about how to access the switch configuration interface and how to get the switch up to date. First, I just want to introduce the GWN7800 models currently available on the market. Uh, there are the models that support dynamic PoE output and the ones that do not support PoE. The offer port density of 8, 16, and 24 gigabit ports and 2 or 4 SFP interfaces. Using the built-in web interface, you can get access to the configuration of many features such as uh, VLANs, QoS, spanning tree, link aggregation, and many other features, including security features. HTTPS access allows the management and configuration of the switch using your preferred web browser. Once you plug the switch into a network using any of the ports, the switch will request an IP address from the router or DHCP server. So you get the assigned IP address, and you type it in your web browser search bar. If no router or DHCP is available to assign an IP address, the switch has the default IP address 192.168.0.254 that allows you to access the web interface when your computer is directly connected to any of the Ethernet ports. So to log into the web interface of the switch, as I mentioned, you just get the IP address and you type it in your web browser search bar. The default username is admin and the password is printed in the barcode label on the back of the switch. So you just take that and you type it in. So when you log in for the first time, it's going to ask you to change the default password. So I'm just going to put my new password. You can also skip that option if you need to. So when you log into the web interface, you get access to the overview page, which provides information about the system, such as basic info, which includes the MAC address, the IP address that is assigned to the switch, the gateway IP address, and some additional information, such as the firmware version that is currently running on this system, under the resource status, you get to monitor the usage of the CPU and the memory. You can also monitor the PoE status to view the PoE operational status of the entire uh, device. And the system events, you get access to the type of alerts. For example, here we have an error message. If we click on it, then it's going to take us to the diagnostics and that gives us uh, an idea about what the error is so here it's telling us there is no firmware all right so let me go back here from here we can also rename the switch of this is like the main switch we can call it main switch and then we can save the name this is important especially in an environment you have many switches you want to label those uh, switches so you know which one is which there are some other settings related to the uh, web interface. So if we go under login service, so you can only have one IP address to access the web interface of the switch. By default, it's going to use the VLAN one. So after you make changes to your VLANs, so let's say you create a new VLAN for the IT department and you want to assign the switch and IP address from that uh, VLAN, you can do that. So currently we only have VLAN 1, but after you create your own VLAN, you can come here and then you can change the VLAN and then reboot the switch so that the switch gets assigned an IP address from the VLAN that you want it to belong to. Uh, you can also configure the static IP address, the subnet mask and the default gateway. So I'm just gonna leave it as DHCP. You can also use it for IPv6. Uh, if we go under access, control so the inactive session timeout is 15 that means if you open the web interface and if there is no activity after 15 minutes you will get locked out so if you need to increase that one 
to an hour for example i can enter 60 minutes telnet by default is disabled ssh is enabled so in addition to using the ip address that is assigned to the switch to access the web interface uh, when you add your switch to gwn.cloud it provides you with an option to have a secure remote access to the web interface of your switch without the need to configure any port forwarding on the router. This is a useful feature, especially when you have multiple switches deployed across multiple geographical locations. And instead of configuring port forwarding for each switch, you can just simply add them to your GWN.cloud. And from there, you will have an option to securely remote into the switch. So let's go ahead and log into my GWN.cloud so I can show you how to add a switch to your GWN.cloud and how to use the option for remote access. GWN.cloud is the cloud-based management platform for GWN devices, including access points, switches, and routers. So I'm just gonna log into my account. So this is my GWN that account, and as you can see, I have a router, some switches, and some access points. So to add a switch to your uh, profile, just make sure you select the correct network, and then you go to devices. I have a few devices already here. So to add a new switch, so I just included a, a name to label that switch. Uh, to add a device, you need two pieces of information, and both of them are printed in the barcode label of the switch. So we need to include the MAC address. So when you enter the MAC address, you just go to the barcode label and take note of the password, and you just paste it here. Then add the device to your GWN account. So once the switch is added to your GWN.cloud and it's showing an online status, then you can use this option here that allows you for remote access. GWN.cloud will create a secure connection with the switch. And as you can see, uh, the switch will be assigned a unique URL to access the web interface. So that's pretty much the same web interface that we have access to using the private IP address of the switch. System time configuration is one of the first things that you need to adjust on the switch. A synchronized system time between switches and other devices is critical because it helps you determine when certain events occur. So you can correlate them with the log files, especially when you are troubleshooting something. You can view the system time under overview system info, then you go to system time. And I can tell that this is not my time zone. So to adjust that, we go to system time settings. On the GWN switch, you can manage the system time and date settings using automatic configuration with NTP or manual configuration method. So I would use the automatic configuration using the NTPs. This is the NTP server that will be used to synchronize the time. If you have one that you prefer, you can always change it. Uh, so I'm going to change this time zone to match my time zone, which is Eastern time. And then save and apply the change. Now, if I go back to system info, the time has been updated to match my time zone. Before you start configuring your switch, it's always recommended to check the firmware version that is currently running on your switch. So this switch is running firmware version 1.0.1.30. To confirm if you are running the latest firmware version, you go to the Grandstream website, which is firmware.grandstream.com. And then we search for the model. So I'm using GWS 7800. So the firmware version that is currently on the website matches the one that I have. So my switch is running the latest firmware version. If you happen to be running an older version, then you go to the switch under maintenance upgrade. There are two ways to upgrade your switch to the latest firmware. The first option is to upload the firmware file 
manually to the switch and to do that we go back to the grand stream website we look for the model then we click on the firmware file so i just need to open the folder that has the firmware then i just by clicking on extract all so now i have the binary file so this is the file that we need to upload to the switch so to do manual upload you just click here then we go to the folder that has the binary file then we select the bin file and then we upload it to the switch once you select the file the switch will start uploading the firmware before doing the upgrade the firmware that we're trying to upload matches the one that we already have so it's going to tell us upgrade failed same version the second way to upgrade the firmware on your switch is by pointing it to the grandstream website which is firmware that's grandstream.com and we can choose http then click ok after it reboots it will request the firmware file so once you enter the uh, firmware url of the grandstream if you go to check for updates the switch will check the website to see if there is a new firmware so here it says upgrade failed same version because the version that we're currently running on this switch matches the one that is on the Grandstream website. So in addition to the super admin account on the GWN 7800, you can actually add more users so that they can log into the web interface of the switch. User management is available in their system user management so this is the super admin if you need to create another account you can just assign it a name if this is for junior admin so we just enter the password that we're going to use for this uh, user account and the user level you have two options is the operator and the monitor the operator level basically has the same privilege as the super admin except for the management of ip address and factory resetting the units the other option is the monitor where user can only log in to view the settings but they don't have any privilege to make any changes to the configuration on the switch so let's go ahead and add this user if you decide to change the current password for the super admin you do that from here you go to change password you enter the current password and you enter the new password that you would like to use our engineers at Grandstream Help Desk can assist with any issues that you might run into while using Grandstream solutions. You can submit a ticket by going to helpdesk.grandstream.com.